And finally, when Britain opened its doors to the Hong Kong Chinese following Beijing's clampdown in 2020, they came here in their hundreds of thousands. But why do we know so little about what is one of the biggest migrant groups to arrive in modern British history? For the magazine this week, I write that they will make as much of a mark on Britain as the Windrush generation did. Joining me now is Reverend Dave Ho Young, whose church is helping new arrivals in Leeds to settle in, and Simon Chang, who was an activist in Hong Kong and granted asylum in the UK in 2020. He now runs the organisation Hong Kongers in Britain. Simon Chen and Reverend Dave Ho Young, welcome to Spectator TV. Now, Dave, I want to start with you because it's really through talking to you that I first got to uh, cover this incredible story of Hong Kong migration to the UK. Can you tell us about the welcome sessions that your church has been putting on? Yeah, so um, our church uh, up in Leeds um, has been uh, doing these these welcome sessions for uh, new arrivals from Hong Kong for uh, probably probably around about 18 months now. And uh, we have been working with uh, a UK charity called uh, Faith Action, who've put together uh, some informal English classes. And uh, we uh, were asked to be one of the uh, the kind of um, uh, churches in in the in the Yorkshire region who would kind of roll out this course. So we've been doing that for, since probably since uh, April twenty twenty two, and I think we've probably had around about. 200 or so uh, people from Hong Kong coming through the course over those uh, over those uh, uh, year and a half. Mm. And for you, this is quite a personal calling too, isn't it? Because you're of mixed British and Chinese heritage yourself, but that it has been a complicated heritage in the past. Yeah, so, uh, so my dad came uh, over from Hong Kong to the UK to study back in the back in the 70s. He met my mum, uh, they got married, had a family. And uh, he lived here for uh, a little while until I was about 10. And then my uh, parents uh, separated and he went back to, to Hong Kong. And uh, so so I kind of was brought up without really that that kind of Chinese or Hong Kong heritage. Uh, I came come from a very kind of uh, white area of the of the UK, I come from Shropshire. So not known for its uh, diversity in that in that part of the world. Um, so, so being Chinese and uh, wasn't uh, kind of a massive part of my uh, my story growing up. Uh, but in the last couple of years, it's something that uh, I have been discovering more about, and something that I've been uh, exploring uh, kind of personally in terms of uh, meeting family in Hong Kong. And then that has kind of dovetailed with uh, with the arrival of so many people from Hong Kong to the UK and particularly to to the parish that I I work in which has kind of been a kind of a, a, a major area that people from Hong Kong are wanting to to move to if they come to Leeds. Mm. What I found um, so lovely when I talked to you earlier in the year was how you were telling me about practicing English with the people who go to these welcome sessions but they were teaching you Cantonese in return as well which you know it, it really bringing that heritage back. Um now Simon the reason we're talking about this is because in the last 2 years uh, through the British Nationals overseas passport route uh, the British government has allowed uh, over 100,000, the precise number is 125,000 Hong Kongers to move to the UK. Now, you yourself are one of those new arrivals and you had to leave Hong Kong because of your political activism. Now, I know you've got an organisation here in the UK now where you're helping the new arrivals. So what can you tell us about the new Hong Kongers who are coming over? You know, where do they go? What sort of backgrounds do they have? What kind of, uh, what kind of work do they do? What kind of people are they? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Cindy, for having me. And uh, we understand that, you know, this visa is quite comprehensive. That's the opens for almost all BNO visa holders that's coming to the UK. So it would be uh, a bit different from the past. That's when people heard they immigrate into the UK either. They could be more uh, well-educated, then they could be more well-off, then they could come to the UK owning uh, like the job visa or in fact the visa but this time that is really open to the mass public so it really comprehensive but generally speaking uh, this bunch of people coming to the UK they are uh, more living in the environment of international city more well educated and of course that they would be familiar with the UK culture so I think this batch of the immigration uh, will be quite specific that they share some historical linkage with the UK. Mm. And your organisation has done a, a study with the University of Liverpool, I saw, which where you found that 79% of the new arrivals are university educated. 
many come many come with cash from selling their Hong Kong flats because the average Hong Kong flat is one point five million pounds. Um, so they're not your usual political refugees. But Simon, do you think it's politics that's mainly driving them here? I think so because that's the people come in here for obvious reason. At least that is also the background of the visa policy. So I guess the people that come in here, they have more concerned about their own children's future. They want to live in a uh, country with the academic freedoms. I think that is the most important thing. And this bunch of people, they also believe in their own life could be flourish because they could also seek for freedom and democracies and here. After a few years, we develop such a exiled community or new communities in here. And we think we're moving to a new phase that, you know, prefects so we think the migrants as a label, we need to be supported. But this time we think we could take leads for change. We could be uh, engaging more uh, within the UK society. So recently we have been funded uh, by many governments then also to uh, launching different types of the programs to train some, we call it community leaders or community organizers uh, from Hong Kong's uh, to be in the UK to learn more about what's the UK culture will be. Mm, that's brilliant. I mean, uh, Dave, you've also had a similar experience to that where one of the people who w was attending your welcome session as a new arrival is now helping you run those welcome sessions. Yeah, abs absolutely. I think um, so we, we we've kind of run two different uh, uh, sessions uh, two different programs, sorry, and we're kind of just on to the third program now. And uh, so, t so actually, two of the people who who did the first session are are helping us to to run uh, the sessions now, and, and pretty much taking a lead in in sort of hosting uh, and planning uh, each of our sessions. Uh, and in general, um, what what are the challenges do you see for the people that you come in contact with, Dave? Um, the people that are coming to your church, um, you know, they, they, we've, we've outlined the ways in which they are much more, you know, in many ways privileged than your usual new arrivals, but they still have challenges. Tell us about that. I think the main, I mean, I guess one of the main challenges is, is language. We're, we're finding that most people from Hong Kong have a, have a good level of English, but they, they just don't feel as confident as they, as they would like to in terms of English. So that's, that's one barrier. Um, another one is is uh, employment. So lots of people, particularly people who came uh, in the first waves, uh, were very successful in Hong Kong. They they had very good jobs, whether in whether in finance or in other areas. Uh, and what pretty much everybody has found coming to the UK is that they they can't work at the same level that they they did in Hong Kong. So they uh, so they're having to take uh, jobs perhaps in the same sector. Um, but jobs that are uh, uh, perhaps a couple of grades down and certainly don't pay as much as they as they as they did in Hong Kong, um, and some people can't get into the into the sector that they worked in at all, so they're doing something completely different. But yeah, that that step down, I think, is quite hard for a, a lot of people to kind of adjust to. Yeah, I spoke to a couple of people at St Barnabas Church where you know they might have done property management in Hong Kong and now they're working in a restaurant. Or they might have done otherwise a white collar job and now they're having to think about retraining in beauty or, or going to a warehouse, something like that. I mean, Simon, presumably that's also quite representative of the Hong Kong as you come across it. What do you think the government can do to make things easier? Well, I think recently that's the UK government launched a different programs of funding uh, for a VCS organisation to provide support. And also the government prioritised employment uh, support would be the top priority because this bunch of the a community uh, usually have been banned from accessing public funds, except they have been in destitution. Um, so that is also really important. Uh, and for uh, giving them some confidence, usually uh, we are uh, experiencing some culture shocks. Our academic and employment qualification experience need to refit into the UK market. And that is also important that how can we start uh, uh, easier because uh, we have been leaked off the uh, credit history to start even the bank accounts. I think it'd be quite useful to many ethnic uh, minority groups or migrant groups, uh, just like what we are now experiencing. But also something that might be a bit unique for us that how the UK government could give us the assurance of our uh, freedoms and safety even in the UK. Um, we know that you know the UK-China uh, relations sometimes change uh, from time to time and how to make sure that 
the security of the and uh, the guarantee of the security of our people living in here will be intact. Uh, we will not be harassed by any suspected informants or sus uh, agents of the CCP regime. And that is also a really important topic for the UK government. Yeah, absolutely, Simon. I mean, as as we know, there is huge tension between the Hong Kong Chinese community here in the UK and mainland Chinese community as well. Do you think that the authorities um, understand the nuances there, you know, where a lot of Hong Kongers who have just come here often associate the mainlanders with the CCP kind of Beijing's control? And then vice versa, there's also a bit of resentment from the other direction. So do you think the British authorities understand that kind of complication? I think there is still a uh, learning curve for the UK government, the super servants to, uh, uh, to, to, to know the situations of the Hong Kong community. I think uh, the uh, also major part for us to address is about the mental trauma. We have a collective memory, uh, what happens back in Hong Kong, that has like really common to see the, the separation of the family, disagreements among different family members. Uh, they will feel lonely uh, in here. They will feel upset that they are now living in freedom, but many of their felons uh, and their people uh, may be staying in the prison. They have a sense of guilty. How can we address this? And also, how can we restore trust amongst our community members, uh, especially as you mentioned, with the uh, British Chinese community it would be really important. I don't think that is only about your own political opinion, but also uh, under this uh, uh, situation, especially after the imposition of the national security law in Hong Kong, the threat is also really obvious and black and white on paper, on a legal document. So I think the people, they have a genuine concern for this. And that is also the people have a concern that they'll be left behind when the UK government now try to engage back with China and will uh, that the promise uh, to the freedom of Hong Kong and the human rights issues about Hong Kong and other, you know, ethnic minority in China would be brought back to on the table. And that would be also important to see the attitude of the UK government. And finally, Dave, we're in a moment um, in public discussions in this country where uh, migration is a very sensitive topic. You know, we've had, uh, I would say, success stories like the Ukrainian refugees and the Hong Kong refugees coming over. But there is also a really live question at the moment over things like the Rwanda scheme, over things like migrants from other places, the small boats crisis. How do you see the fact that, you know, there has been so little backlash or even discussion of, you know, the population of Eastbourne in terms of Hong Kongers coming over to the UK in the last two years? Is it because um, they're very good at integrating and with all your experience working on the ground? What do you put that down to? Um, uh, personally, I think it seems a bit of a, a hidden migration. I think uh, people are kind of aware of, of what's been happening in Hong Kong over the last couple of years. And, and lots of people know that Hong Kongers are, uh, are coming to the UK. Um, but I think it, it is very much hidden. It's kind of spread all across the country. I think other other groups uh, of, of migrants, uh, are, well, there's obviously the, the people crossing in boats, gets all the headlines, uh, people coming from Afghanistan uh, from the evacuation a couple of years ago. Uh, gets a lot of the headlines. Ukraine gets a lot of the head headlines, but I think Hong Kong hasn't had the same uh, exposure in the media that perhaps some of the other migrations have. So I think it is, in a sense, quite invisible. Uh, you know, particularly to people who who don't pay that much uh, attention to, to to maybe what's going on in Hong Kong. Simon, does that wider rhetoric against uh, new migrants in general does that worry you and the Hong Kongers that you come across? Yes, I don't think we should fall into the narrative that what is good migrant or bad migrant, because always that, you know, like Hong Kong is coming here, uh, we're always being framed as pretty much well-educated, well-off, etc. But actually, as an association, we receive quite many cases that actually they need to be supported. They might not be always being living in the stereotype of some kind of the people. And that has much more uh, like more vulnerable groups that they, their voices need to be amplified. And I think this rhetoric, you know, the migrants group sometime, I think uh, uh, we need to empower, uh, you know, that is the same that, you know, the migrants that we always see some kind of people, they need some support and help. And, you know, it is, it's really normal and usual. We try to bring it to the media and to other people to know, like, you know, migrants also just the same as the local residents. And so they're going to be, and they actually, they are local residents now in the UK. 
Simon Chen and Reverend Dave Ho-Young. Thank you so much for joining Spectator TV.